turn with me to John chapter 20, verse 18. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that he had spoken these things to her. This morning, I want to focus on a phrase which Mary Magdalene said to the disciples. She came to the disciples. The disciples were in their homes. It was three days after crucifixion. Tap your neighbor and say, lots can happen in three days. Hallelujah. See, we think, oh, for God, it takes a long time. No, no, no. God just needs unrestricted access into your life. Then I can guarantee you three days, everything that is dead will come back to life. Tap yourself and say, give him unrestricted access. What does that mean? Let him go in your house wherever he wants to. Don't lock doors. Don't limit him. We have learned to live a Christianity where we say, God, this is your boundary. Don't put boundaries to God. Tap yourself and say, remove the limits. Come on, shout, remove the limits. Don't tie God's hands. In three days, lots of things happen. Mary ran to the disciples. And this is what she said. I have seen the Lord. My prayer this morning is we as simply Jesus will carry that testimony. I have seen the Lord. See, this testimony is what transforms us. You know, I think it was yesterday or this morning, I'm not sure, yesterday, the White House announced that the, 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 the 31st of March was the Alphabet Community Visibility Day. We are living in that times. But let me tell you today that it is the day when Jesus came alive. It is the visibility of the resurrection of my Lord Jesus. I don't care who announces what, but this is what I know. He died. He was buried and Satan came against him with every ounce that he got. But the Bible says he rose again. It's time to make Jesus visible. It's time to make Jesus famous. That's our motto of simply Jesus. Let's make Jesus famous. It's not about our ministry. It's not about miracles. It's not about even salvations. But let me tell you, it is about one and only one. And his name is... Mary went to the disciples and said, I have seen the Lord. What a beautiful thing. The first... oh, You know, when Jesus died, when he was on the cross and when he died, when he carried the cross, the entire Jerusalem saw him. He did not die in the hiding publicly he was put to shame when he died it was a public event but when he rose again it was in the darkness of the early morning when he died he showed himself to 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 the to pilot he showed himself to the centurion the crucified Christ is visible for the world to see. 
but the resurrected Christ is only for those who seek him. He didn't rise up and go to Pilate and knock on his door. Hello? Did he do that? Could he do that? Yeah. But let me tell you, the resurrection, meeting the resurrected Christ is not for the casual Christian. It's for that who wants to seek him. See, if you have to see him, you will have to meet him. The problem is we have removed that equation from Christianity and said, hey, if you come to church, you're a Christian. Shut up. You can come to any church you want. Even you can sit in simply Jesus and scream hallelujah. That will not make you a Christian. You have to meet the resurrected Jesus. Ah! Oh, come on, clap and give God the glory. When you meet him, something happens. When you meet him, you no longer live for yourself. It's not about you and what you can do. It's about what God, what you want me to do. Tap your neighbor and say, I am not a casual Christian. I'm a radical Christian. Oh, come on, shout. I'm a radical Christian. Oh, come on, pump yourself in the air and say, I'm a radical Christian. Hallelujah! God is building an army of radical believers. God is building an army of warriors. God is building an army of those who will say, I have seen the Lord. That's my prayer this morning. That's my prayer this morning. That you and I will go out of this place and say, no, I have not just seen a, 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 an open tomb. See, there were three women. The Bible says, there were three women. Mary of Magdalene. Mary, her name is the mother of James. And Salome, in Luke chapter 24, verse 1, three women left their home and went searching for the body of Jesus. See, many people start the journey, but only one person saw Jesus. Oh, you can say, I'm walking with Dr. Sonny. Hey, it doesn't matter who you're walking with. Are you walking until you will meet Jesus? Amen. Matthew 24, verse 1. Three women started. Hey, in America, it is cool to carry a Bible. In America, it is cool to go to church. And so many people come to church on an Easter morning. But let me tell you, this woman kept seeking for the body of Jesus. They went to the place where Jesus was laid and they found the stone rolled away. Tap your neighbor and say, the empty tomb. Many of us come as far as the empty tomb and stop. Oh, I saw the empty tomb. I know Jesus is alive. But it's not going to do any good. It's not going to do any good. How many of us are living Christian life with an empty tomb experience? Ah, I went there. I went to simply Jesus. I felt the heebie-jeebies. Baba, you can feel the heebie-jeebies, but that is not the Holy Spirit. You got to go beyond the heebie-jeebies. You got to go beyond. Don't stop with the empty tomb. Then they ran and told the disciples, and Peter ran. The Bible says, if you read in John chapter number 20, verse 6, Simon Peter came, and he went into the tomb, and he saw the linen. 
that Jesus had wrapped on it. Wow. See, some people come up to the tomb, but some people enter the tomb. But the Bible says, Peter went back to his home. See, you can even see the linen that Jesus wore on his face, but that will not change your life. Peter went back to his home. You can come to Simply Jesus and you can hear Dr. Sonny keep screaming in the top of his lung, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And you can hear and say, Ha! Ah, I felt it! Go beyond the grave. Go beyond the, 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 the linen. Then, 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 then the Bible says, Mary was standing. Peter went home. Tap yourself and say, Keep standing. Keep standing. Oh, come on, shout, keep standing. Amen. Keep standing. Amen. Hey, if you have to see Jesus, you have to seek him with all of your... Tap your neighbor and say, all. all. Come on, shout, all. All, all of your heart. Peter, you know, followed Jesus with a partial heart. He came up to the linen. He saw the shroud of, what is that called? Purim, right? Uh -huh. They say, wow, that's the real thing. Oh, I, there is an imprint of Jesus' face in it. So what? I've seen him alive. I don't need a shroud of Purim. I have seen him alive. This morning, that's my cry for you. That you will get up with the fervor in your heart this after the service and you will go back home and say, God, I will not stop at the open tomb. I will not stop at the shroud of Purim. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I'm hungry for you. I'm hungry for you. I've come to the table to eat. I'm thirsty for you. I'm thirsty for you. I've come to the water to drink. Nothing else can satisfy. Nothing else can substitute meeting Jesus. When she was standing outside the grave, she looked down and inside she saw two angels. Ah, tap your neighbor and say, angels. angels. Listen, listen carefully to me. Where were the angels? They were always there. Did Peter see it? You can come and sit and simply Jesus. The person next to you will see the power of God, but you will be sitting as if nothing is happening. Jacob said he was in the place called Bethel. He saw a dream and he saw the ladder going up to heaven and he woke up and said, the Lord is in this place, surely. But I did not know it. Are we living a life following an unknown God, we get satisfied with the tomb. We get satisfied with the shroud. We get satisfied with angels. But, but Mary Magdalene said, nope, angels, you are good. I like you, but I need Jesus. Ah, come on, clap and give God the glory. Who are you seeking? That's what Jesus asked Mary. Mary, 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 who are you seeking? Are you seeking angels? Many of our testimonies, oh, Jesus healed me. That's good, that's good. Oh, I saw an angel. Oh, that's fantastic. Baba, they will not change you. Only Jesus can. Tap yourself and say, I need to see Jesus. I need to see Jesus. Oh, come on, shout, I need to see Jesus. I need to see Jesus. 
Hey, I want to tell you the power of meeting Jesus face to face. You can be a Christian, but you can live a Christian life without meeting him. Turn with me. I, I, want, I want you to read a scripture here. Okay, are, are, you, are you ready to read a little bit? Okay. Let's, let's turn to Luke chapter, I think it is 24. Luke chapter 24. You know, America, American Christianity has trained us to celebrate Easter, but has failed in training us to validate the power of Easter. You are not called just to celebrate. You're called to prove that Jesus is alive. This morning, the Holy Spirit is turning a simple believer into a warrior. This morning, the Holy Spirit is picking you up from your fears and turning you into a sign and a wonder. You don't do witnessing anymore. You are a witness. See, the problem our witnesses are so weak is because we are doing witnessing. But God has never said you to go do witnessing. He called you to be a witness. When they see your life, they see Jesus. When they read your life, they read the book of the Bible. Ah. Luke 24, come on. Luke 24. I'm going to read a few scriptures from there. <laughs> Verse 13, 14, and 15. Now behold, two of them were traveling the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. And they talked together. Tap your neighbor and say, they talked together. Of all these things which had happened, Verse 15, so it was, while they conversed and reasoned with each other, that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. Verse 16, but their eyes were restrained, so they did not know him. Just, just stop here. Just think about it. These disciples are going to Emmaus. They are disciples. They knew the Lord. They knew that Jesus was crucified. But when Jesus came walking with them, they did not know him. How many Christians are filling the churches this morning walking with an unknown God? Oh, I know my mama believes. Oh, my, my wife reads the Bible. How about you? If you come to simply, I won't hold back. What comes in my heart flies out of my mouth. I'm not going to tame it down. Oh, it'll offend somebody. Baba, if it offends you, we can pray for the healing so that you can grow. Stop drinking milk that your wife Provides to you by her prayer life. Man of God, eat the meat of the word of God. Yeah. Oh, I don't read the Bible. I don't understand it. Slap your brain until understand. Aha, in your work, if they put you to a training and they tell you, hey, you got to learn it. Otherwise, you lose your job. What will you do? Aha, you learn it. But with Jesus, hey, he is loving he cares for you. Does he? Yeah, he cares so much to let you go the way you want to go. And meet the consequences of your choices. Don't weep and lament when tormentors are attacking you. Because you choose not to forgive. The Bible says, your heavenly father has forgiven you. You should forgive others. But if you say, ha, ah, nup, 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 you don't know what he did to me. I don't know and I don't want to know. But one thing I want you to know, forgive. If you don't, the Bible says, he will give you to the tormentors. Dr. Sunny, are you really talking about the Jesus of the Bible? Uh-huh. Yep. Tap yourself and say, wake up. Wake up! The 
disciples were walking and Jesus was walking with them. I don't know how long they were walking, but they did not know him. He was a stranger. How many Christians, you are sitting in the church this morning, you will get up and go and Jesus will go with you, but you won't even know. How long do you want to live like that? Simply Jesus. How long do you want to live with an unknown God? You know, Paul went to, went to a, a place called, I think it was Mars Hill, Athens. And he was walking through the city of Athens and, and he saw different idols. And as he was looking at the idols, some were big, some were glorious. They were carved, the mastery of human, human skill. Then he came to an altar. The altar was built and it said to the unknown God. How many churches are worshipping a God they do not fully know? Oh, he, I know him as a savior, but there is more. I know him as a healer, but there is more. Tap your neighbor and say, there is more. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. The greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. Tap your neighbor and say, I want to know him more. You know, Paul, towards the end of his life, he says, uh, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. The cry of his heart. This morning, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will put that cry in your heart. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. The greatest thing in all my life is knowing you. There is nothing more. Guys, if you wake up in the morning and your heart is beating, there is one purpose that you have. I want to know him. I want to know him. How many of you are getting hungry right now? Not for a burger, but for his presence. If you're getting hungry for a burger, okay, I'm sorry, I did a lousy job. But my prayer is that you will be hungry for his presence. They were walking and Jesus drew near. Jesus drew near. And just think about it. The resurrected Christ, the one whose eyes were like fire, the one whose tongue had a double-edged sword, this resurrected Christ was walking beside this disciple. And he did not know him. Is it possible for us to live without knowing our God? Is it possible for us to come to a worship service, lift our hands and worship him without knowing who we are worshiping? this morning is please don't stop at the open grave please don't stop at the fancy angels draw closer to him this is just an introduction <laughs> we are already past our time listen I want to tell you some shota mm, what should I do so I can know him? What should I do so I can know him? The first thing is seek his face. Jesus looked at Mary when she was standing in the garden and she thought that this man was a gardener. How many times we mistake the very resurrected Christ for somebody else? By the end of the service, we need to say, I have seen the Lord. That's my heart's cry. I have seen him face to face. 
I heard his voice. I touched him and I felt him. I know he is alive. Jesus asked Mary, who are you seeking? Jeremiah 29 verse 13 says, if you seek me, you, let, let, let me read that, let me read that. I don't want to misquote it. Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me. Tap your neighbor and say, you will find him when you seek him. Are you there with me? See, you have to discover the resurrected Jesus. He is alive, but you have to seek him. The Jesus that died on the cross is seen by everybody. But the resurrected Jesus is hidden. He's hidden for you. God is saying, come, 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 come. Seek me. If you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with all your heart. So, the diagnosis for our condition. If we have not found him yet, if we have not seen him yet, the diagnosis is you are seeking him not with all of your heart, with some of your... Baba, I'm a medical doctor. When people come to me, when I give a diagnosis, I don't, I don't play pity party. I just tell it as it is. Baba, you have heart attack. You will die in the next 24 hours if you don't do this. Oh, you're, you're so rude. Yeah, because I got to save your life. Uh -huh. For me to save your life, I got to tell it as it is. You will find me when you seek me. But this is how you got to seek me. Seek me with all. All. All of your heart. Simply Jesus. Can we seek him with all of our heart? You know, some people seek different things. But let me tell you, you seek what you value. See, if, if your job is not important, you will find reasons not to go to work. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah, that's true. If your spouse is not important, you will find reasons to stay in the golf course. You will seek what you value. Yeah. This morning I want to tell you, it's more valuable than gold. I love, I love, I love your presence. I love I'm going to seek him with all my heart. The Lord is saying, I have to just conclude this message right now. I'm going to open the altar. I'm going to give an altar call. If Brianna can come up here, that'll be great. But I want, I want you to read. No, don't, tell, don't think, oh, I'm a believer for 50 years. Don't tell me you are a, oh, I minister. The, shut up. The question is, do you want to seek him with all of your heart? If you say yes, get up off your chair. Come up here.